checkouts at 11. I'm, I've got time here. That's I was like, absurd. I was really shocked. <laughs> I was really shocked. <laughs> Welcome to Trevor Talks Too Much, the show where I put my gift of gab to the test and no topic is off limits. I'm your host, Trevor Everts, master baker, mythical soft boy, geoguesser extraordinaire. Okay, I'm freaking goaded at geoguesser. Uh, and today I spoke with Keith Habersberger of the Try Guys. I don't know why I said it like that. It was actually a really freaking awesome time. <laughs> um, no, I spoke with Keith, uh, canonically, I believe the tallest member of the group. Um, which is big. Uh, and he also does uh, Lou Burger, which is his comedy music group. He's got all sorts of stuff going on. He's a great guy. And we talked about all sorts of stuff. We talked about chilies. We talked about Applebee's. And we talked about the Golden Corral, baby. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. That's all we talked about. <laughs> no, there was other things. No, I'm kidding. There's a ton of other things. I mean, we talked about our favorite restaurants. We talked about our secret little spots that we like to keep to ourselves. Um, we didn't say the names of them, obviously. Um, yeah, and we talked about some chicken trivia, and we played a little GeoGuessr. I'm saying it in the intro, so Jamie has to leave it in. Let's freaking go! Um, Jamie, I got a question for you. Yeah. Have you heard Seabat? N- no. You haven't heard Seabat? <laughs> Is it a, is it a, it's a music? Song. It's a song. Uh, of a, of it's a, a song. Okay, music okay. Music variety. Are you familiar with the uh, song that's been going around recently? You probably have heard it. I was just curious um, what you thought of it. It's the song that the weird guy on Reddit, like, uh, bangs to. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that's the only reason why I know it is because of that thread. <laughs> oh, my That's the my only God. reason Anybody knows that song unless you watched Workaholics and remembered it, because I guess it was in Workaholics. So I guess that's my question. Do you think it's a do you think that song bangs? This is my thing. Uh <laughs> if someone is going to listen to that song because they need to keep a good rhythm during Hanky Panky, <laughs> please have it in AirPods. <laughs> I I would really not want to hear that and i can look look this is gonna be too much information but i can get frisky to anything okay but that is yeah. kind of where i draw the line that's where you draw the line at sea bat there was some other crazy stuff on that guy's playlist there was, there was stuff crazier than sea bat i wonder like how long this poor girl yeah <laughs> that she was just like and how much of a saint is she that she just let yeah. him play that song? I know. She really must have like loved him. Cause like that takes a lot. If I if if there was a partner that started playing that, I would be very upfront and be like, that is not a good song to make. Like, do you not listen to music? Have you ever heard of The Weeknd or like any like other like R and B artist? Literally. Motown. Dude, Marvin Gaye. Marvin Gaye. Like any anyone. Anything. Le- I don't know. I'm I'll, sorry. I'll, I just wanted to know your thoughts. Yeah. I, that whole playlist is hilarious to me. There's some crazy stuff on there. Do you have a sexy time playlist? <laughs> I, yeah, but not one that I use. I don't have like a Bluetooth speaker in my room. Like I usually leave my Bluetooth speaker in my bathroom because I'll listen to music while I take a shower. Mm-hmm. And so... I don't keep it in my room. And then like by the time I would be like wanting to put music on, it seems like a hassle. Cause I gotta go find it. I gotta turn it on. I gotta make sure my phone's connected. And then I gotta play, like find the playlist and hit shuffle. It just seems like a lot of time that's lost. I don't know. I don't occasionally I'll play something, but usually, you know, you don't you know, I don't really need music. Plus, I mean, you know. <laughs> Never mind. No. I was gonna make a joke. Oh. <laughs> I was gonna say, I feel like for me, it's more of the act of like, oh, before we go any further, let me put on oh. a song. Like, I don't know about y'all, but like we we just kind of go for it whenever the moment strikes. <laughs> so it's not like we're like setting the mood, really. Yeah. Keith is way better than whatever I was about to say. <laughs> Why is the cricket back? The cricket is making fun of me. <laughs> the cricket... The cricket in here literally did it. It was we did not hear a peep while Keith was here, and then now, as soon as I start talking by myself, the cricket starts piping up. 
It's crazy. He'll like the. It's like a uh, those like a flag twirling. It's like if you held a lasso with two hands. Yeah, <laughs> I genuinely don't understand the way he like maneuvers and his body like, it around. Even it. Hit the floor. Never. And he gets it so long too. Oh, wait, so it's gonna hit it's the... a guy's actually doing a it. A guy is making your noodle. It's raw noodle in dough. front of you for a minute, dancing around the space like a ribbon dancer. Fresh made noodles like a ribbon dancer. And then you get it. And you're like, that was four dollars. It was four dollars. <laughs> oh my god! And then you put the noodle in the soup, and it's delicious. And it's a it's a really good it's noodle. It's a great noodle. The noodle alone should cost six dollars. Yeah. And the fact that you get a dance. It's shocking because the inst- they have like instant ramen noodle, like ramen yeah. brick noodles. Yeah. That you can get, and that's like two dollars. Yeah. And then for two more dollars, you get the noodle dance. A hand pulled wide noodle. It's crazy. It's oh my unreal. gosh! It's really hand dance noodle. Yeah, hand dancing. Hand dance. For sure. Yeah. Um, everybody, welcome to the show. <laughs> friend of the show, friend of the company, Mythical Entertainment, Keith from the Try Guys. Hey. Keith, what's your favorite thing that you've tried? Oh, wow. What's your favorite <laughs> thing that I've tried? Um, well, I no, go ahead, go like ahead. it when I eat. It's fun. It's, yeah. It's become a very big part of who I am, okay. eating a lot of garbage. Okay. Follow-up question. Yeah. Do you actually eat the menu? So I, it should probably be called taste the menu. Yeah. Because, but I do order every single thing and take yeah. at least one big bite of every single item. And some items oh get God. a few bites yeah. if they're really good. Mm-hmm. And if it's early in the video when I'm still hungry. You just did one at Caesar's Palace in Vegas, right? Yes. So what was that? Was that like every item at the buffet or was it everything in every restaurant? No, in it was Caesar? just the buffet. Okay. <laughs> it, was, it was the Bacchanal buffet. The Bacchanal which buffet. Bacchanal, if you know that word, it means like indulging in all of the sins. Yeah. Which is a great name for anything in Vegas. And yeah. I, I can't believe that no one else has tried to use that word, but they nailed it. It's a great it. word. It's a great buffet. Yeah. Truly, it was like very impressive that most of it was quite good. Some of it was like, just okay good but honestly on a buffet that's kind of like impressive no yeah there were maybe three things that i thought like okay that's gross (laughs) yeah i've been to that buffet like once or twice because my parents always stay at caesar's when they go to vegas Mm -hmm. and i remember going they're like oh we're gonna go to the buffet and i was like buffet i mean come on you know and then i went and i was like oh this is a different kind of buffet than I'm using. This it's, ain't the hometown buffet. Uh, this is not Golden Corral. No. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Wait. Wait. Don't. Don't. Don't talk crap on the Golden Corral. Okay. Now. Well. Did what? You where'd you grow up? I grew up in Boise, Idaho. Okay. So did you have which did you have? Hometown, home country buffet, or whatever hometown buffet. Uh, uh, Golden Corral or Ryan's or Ponderosa. We had Golden Corral. But my dad, my parents were never buffet people growing up. Like we, my parents weren't either. I don't. And think, they were right. Yeah, they're right. But 100%. I, as a kid, thought, why aren't we going to yeah. Ponderosa? God dang it! <laughs> <laughs> the commercials why make it look not? dope. It seems like there's steaks on the buffet. Are yeah. you kidding me? No, that was like anytime I went to like hang out with my my grandparents. It was like God. I hope we go to the Golden Corral. I yeah, want to go. That's how you'd go. That's how you go. You hang. I out had with your a neighbor friend who was like my access into the forbidden side of the world yeah. which i realized later was just like the food yeah. side of the world. but like they took me to my first applebees yeah. they took me to my first ryan's my first ponderosa my home oh my t- b- b- buffet yeah. they took me to the other like kind of bad food experiences yeah. that i always thought i wanted yeah <laughs> and i think as a kid i did think they were good yeah but part of me like was like it's not that good it's not that good I mean, I've grown an appreciation because my parents, like, I don't want to call my parents food elitists, but they like really good food. And my dad, you know, he's worked very hard in his life. He's made a lot of money. And he, my parents, nice. like, rarely cook very at home. Cool. And he, he's, like, very passionate about, like, I want to be able to pay people that have spent their lives perfecting a craft to do their, the thing that they do so well. He, he strongly believes in that. What, so what's he your goes, dad's favorite food? Um, oh, my God. That's really hard to say. I don't know. He loves sushi. Um, shockingly, there's some very good sushi places in Idaho. Really? Um, that is shocking. Yeah, there there are. There's some <laughs> not, really good- Would not have thought that. No, I know. I wouldn't have either, but there are. Um, he, I don't know. I mean, he's a big meat guy. He loves most meat. Dads. He, most dads. Most dads. You know? Not all. Not all. Most dads. But- yeah, I mean, he just loves food and he loves going out to eat and he has his favorite places. But I, he didn't take me to a lot of, you know, the chilies, the Applebee's, stuff like that. My parents eventually got on the chilies train. Yeah. Now we went to some, we went to Olive Garden, of yeah. course. We went to Red Lobster, of course. And that yeah. seems, I think those are owned by the same company. But maybe, so they, maybe they had like a brand loyalty I wasn't aware mm. of. But yeah. 
in like my senior year of high school, they really we moved to a place that was like that had a Chili's within yeah. like two miles. So we started just getting chilies like to go yeah. all the time. And that sort of became they're like, Oh, what do we do for dinner? <laughs> oh, let's get those things we always get from chilies. And I was kinda yeah. like, Okay, cool. But it was that yeah. point where I started realizing like, oh, this isn't better than cooking. No. No. No, not at all. <laughs> but I get that it's a lot easier. Yeah. Getting to go steaks is just never a lot easier. A good taste but it is so easy. yeah yeah but then you grow up and you realize how amazing the chili's experience is go being in the restaurant yeah is 18 times better than getting to go phenomenal from i don't it's think i've ever gotten chilies to go oh yeah. well it's not as good <laughs> <laughs> my parents did not want the vibes they, they just wanted want the, the steaks vibes. yeah and i have obviously had a great time at every chili's i've gotten to yeah Chili's does good stuff. I mean, even like Applebee's. Like you go to Applebee's and you know what you're getting. You're you're getting mid tier food. You know that's it's hot and it's coming out to you and it's good enough. And you're getting cheap liquor. Uh huh. And you're getting a, yep. a great environment to just be getting a degenerate. A, you're getting a queso. Baby. Yeah, getting a queso. Getting a queso. Oh. Getting a little scummy. Uh -huh. and being a little bit of a. And degenerate. what was it like? A one dollar Long Island. They Something had. like that, well, yeah. And then it was the, the Applebee's was really famous for like doing the late night happy hour. Yeah. Which I used to tour with an improv group. So we would be in all parts of like America that would be like closed at 8 yeah. p.m. Except for the Applebee's, which was open until midnight and yeah. had half price appetizers from 10 o'clock on. So I was just exclusively eating like jalapeno poppers yeah. and beer <laughs> as the only sustenance. Yeah. <laughs> what else do you need, man? <laughs> I mean, it was a pretty glorious time. I was... I was 22, yeah. so my body handled it a lot better yeah. than now. Than yeah. now, than now. I think you but now, but now I do it like as a sport. <laughs> yeah. Eat the menu is kind of like my athleticism. On it display. is a sport because it's like competitive eating, but yeah. most competitive eating are sprints. Yeah, I do a marathon. <laughs> That's the difference. I can't like competitive eat. Like I, I genuinely, Neither. it's I can't put it all in there that quick. It doesn't work. Like I can eat a lot of food over a period of time, but I also have to be drinking to eat a lot. Like, I don't have a big appetite. If I start drinking, the appetite gets bigger, and I'll sit at the hot pot for freaking, like, I'll sit at the hot pot for two and a half hours, and well, I'll keep also, getting stuff. the hot pot tricks you, because you're actually eating very little at a time. Yeah. the meat's so thin. Yeah. <laughs> and you're sort of drinking broth. Yeah, you're drinking broth, you're, you're drinking eating thin broth. meat. You're thin meat. You're getting a good amount of noodles, though, depending on what you go you with. You get the vegetables. You get the you vegetables. You make your own little sauce, but if you don't know what the heck you're doing, your hot pot experience could be bad. Yeah. You gotta know how to make your sauce. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm a very big sauce guy when I go to the hot pot. I've, I feel like I've, for me at least, I've perfected See, my sauce that I love. And you're the right person to go with. Yeah. So if you're out there like, oh, I've always wanted to try hot pot, you have to find a friend who feels like they know what they're doing. Yeah. Because you will not know what you're doing. Oh, yeah. It's so intimidating. Because now they just hand you the iPad and they say, all right, pick your stuff. And you're staring down nine different broths. Oh. And you don't know what they taste like together. No It's clue. not the days where you could go to the thing and like ladle a little on your wrist and just keep licking <laughs> yeah. yourself. And be like, yeah, I think that'll work. <laughs> no, it's intimidating. You, you're staring down nine different soup bases and mm -hmm. then you're like, okay, I don't know what these taste like, but you can go with four or two. Mm -hmm. You pick your soup bases, and then you've just got everything on the menu, like all the different meats, mm -hmm. all the different like vegetables, all the different miscellaneous things. Like, do I want duck eggs to drop in my soup? I guess uh, so. I don't know. I mean, I feel like I would choose that. Yeah. I would need yeah. to go with you. I have not gone to Hot Pot. I've only done, what was it, Shabu Shabu? Shabu Shabu is good. Shabu Shabu is a little bit more one, personalized. Which one's Shabu Shabu? Shabu Shabu is, um, I believe, I mean, I'm going to sound terrible if I'm wrong, but I leave, it's sort of the Japanese version of Hot Pot. Yeah. Where, where it's soup? It's soup, yeah, but you actually, it's all done in front of you. So instead of having like a, a thing in the middle, at least uh -huh. the Shabu Shabu place that I go to a lot, um, you get like a bowl in front of you and you kind of build your own soup base with some like flavors that they have. Mm -hmm. So you can kind of adjust it to the way that you want it and okay. the flavors that you want. And then you order meat and vegetables and you have like your own platter of meat and vegetables that you then dip in your own soup. Okay. Um, it's good. It's definitely not as, uh, it's not as good of a group setting because generally it's like around a bar. So you can't like sit at like a table mm -hmm. usually. Mm -hmm. Sometimes depending on where you go. There's no noodle dancer. There's no noodle dancer. Yeah, that sounds like the best part. It is. Jamie, I'll take you to Heidi Lau. We can you, go. You really got to take her. Yeah. I know. I feel bad. You I gotta go. They've I gotta got a go. beer tower. He talks about it like every third podcast. Oh, yeah. You get like a weird vertical keg 
experience. Tower of beer. It's like a it's it's it, got its own spout. It's got a spout. You just get this gigantic tall thing. It's full of beer, and then they give you cups, and you just spout. Oh, I love that. Instead of a pitcher, it's what? a tower. Yeah. I like that. It's amazing. It's dope. Except it's hard for me to eat and drink at the same time. See, I'm opposite you. I can't like. Not at the hot pot. Not at the hot no, pot. No, not at the hot pot. See, I also like, <laughs> I actually, when I do eat the menus, I like typically don't drink almost anything. Maybe really? like a little bit. Of, well, I need all of the space for food. Yeah, that makes sense. I got to be slug in Sapporo at the hot oh, pot. Delicious. It's so good. So good. It just Kieran, mixes in your belly with Kieran the broth. A little well. Kieran. Mmm. Mm. Mm, so nice. Now a mm. hot pot. Dang it. <laughs> I do too. I've been like actually trying to go. And every time I think, oh, we should go to hot pot. It's like Friday night. I'm like, this is not a good time to just show up. Because no. it's like a three hour wait. The hot pot poops though. <sighs> I, it's hot. It's hot. <laughs> Literally every day after I have hot pot, the, the poops are just, they're painful. It's rough. But I also eat a lot of spicy food when I'm there. Well, that's probably why. I'm a big spicy also, guy. Also, it's just a lot of broth. But I just love sharing because yeah. I want to taste as many things yeah, as possible. I'm no sure. longer interested in everyone ordering their own meal. Yeah. That's no, stupid. neither am I. I don't ever go out with friends and like try and just like order my own thing. No. It's nice when I go out with Josh because Josh is the orderer. So if I'm ever out at dinner with Josh... He will order everything. Josh does have a tendency to overorder, though. See, I'm I'm okay with that. The more I get, I'm like, you don't have to finish it all. Yeah, we're here to taste it all. Yeah, we're here to taste it all. Definitely, dinner doesn't have to be fully consumed. Yeah, I know that you're like, well, there's food waste. Like, there's food waste anyway. Yeah, food waste is a touchy <sighs> subject. I know. It's I, I get it too. I yeah. hey, look, I ate the menu. Yeah, and I'm not eating everything. But guess it's what? Hard. You know, we do. I our wouldn't part. call everything I eat food. <laughs> <laughs> That's, if I'm being totally fair, I call it goo. Goo. Flavored goo. <laughs> yeah. Del, I just did Del Taco the other day. Yeah. No spoilers, but it was bad. <laughs> no. <laughs> not the Del Taco. I, and I love Del Taco. <laughs> I, at least I thought I did. <laughs> I, I was I like really hear. like, this one's going to be awesome. I've only ever had the crunchy tacos. <laughs> and, and I've only ever had the like the double yeah. burger. And I've had both of those either drunk or hungover. Yeah. So I've been like, this is perfect. It's mm-hmm. so good. Yeah. And then I had the whole menu. I was like, oh, I, it's actually quite bad. Yeah. I'd say, <laughs> I'd say it's like 95% really bad. Really? And, which is like a really low score. And I felt, I felt bad because I don't really like doing those videos just to trash yeah. a, a company because it's not nice. <laughs> It's not nice. Yeah, and I know, nice. and I think people don't like watching someone be negative for like yeah. forty five minutes. And that, but I was like, and I was like bummed because I was like being negative, but it was bad. Yeah, and I felt bad. And I I don't know if I could do it, like eating an entire menu somewhere. Because I feel come like on, I'll have you on next time, at least for a segment, so you can at least have eight things. Yeah, I'd love even, to do all that. All my guests are like eat eight bites. They're like, wow, I feel bad. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I would feel bad, but I wouldn't say anything. I'd keep going. Because, like, when I'm eating food for content, I can just keep on going. Right. Like, I know how to stop myself when I'm out eating food for enjoyment. Like, I'll eat, this I'll get full, work. and I'm like, this is good. And then when it's work time, it's like, I'll just shove things in yeah, my mouth. Yeah, you just keep until, going. Yeah. You just keep going. And You're like, oh, I know this will ruin my stomach, but I'm going to eat it. I literally, <laughs> this is this is probably going to sound bad, but I there was one day where we were shooting in the kitchen, and I think it was me and Josh, and we were doing a bunch of episodes together. Mm-hmm. And so at the end of it, we I think we were shooting past food, which is like the show where we like uh-huh. recreate discontinued fast food items. And we're doing it true to the fast food items. So we're basically just making crappy food. Yeah. And we're then eating it. Yeah. And like we shot like two or three of those in a day. And I felt so bad. I was like, I just don't want to feel bad. I just, and I, just, I, love I went and threw up. One. You did? <laughs> yeah. I, I literally mean... went and threw up because I was just like, I just feel like crap. And I know it's because I just I wish ate I all could this. throw up. My yeah. body doesn't, it, it insists on digesting it. Mm. Really? Yeah. I, oh, I just, I can't, my, I don't like the feeling of throwing up Oh, most of food. us do. <laughs> <laughs> no, I meant like throwing up food, you know what yeah. I mean? Well, no like, one wants to throw up anything, but yes, I would say recently chewed food is probably one of the worst. Like, imagine yeah. if it's, versions. like, imagine if it's eggs. Oh, eggs. Or like good. certain, I just feel like certain foods are worse. Like hot I, Cheetos. Oh. Yeah, I'd say it's probably worse for the stuff that's like not soft going in. Yeah. I mean, like eggs really? at least are kind of soft going in. I guess, but it But makes... like chips, which become an, oh. a whole mealy thing. Yeah. That's pretty rough. That's rough. Because mm. they also soak up what's down there in your I guess. guts. So yeah. When you throw it up, it's like, oh, this is a whole different, oh, this is a whole different experience. This is a whole <laughs> Which I'm sure the I'm listeners of the show are not super thrilled that we're dwelling on the vomit, but <laughs> You know, we, I don't know yeah. what your audience is like. I don't know what they're like either. They seem pretty crazy if they listen to me. Yeah. <laughs> Are you having fun? 
So far. So far? I've yeah. got a fun story. Am I in it? Y- you are. <laughs> Sold. So <laughs> and I swear I keep swearing. Is that okay? I yeah, know that's lot, okay. Some yeah. some parts of this company are very PG. We're not PG, but at least not R. Um, yeah, it's not mean. Good. As it, unless unless you're using it meanly. Yeah, it's like filler. I words. think that's the difference, right? Yeah, is that sometimes you swear and you're saying like F- you. Yeah. And sometimes you're saying F- this is dope. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> and it's just the context for within the swear yeah. really to me is what makes it bad. The yeah. word itself. One hundred percent is is fun. It's a fun word. It's like sprinkles. Yeah. Yeah, you know, Sprink- like and sprinkles. then like, oh. okay, how do you feel? How I do you were f- saying sprinkles is a fun word? Like, <laughs> yeah, 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 it's like the word sprinkle. Like they're sprinkles. No, they're like sprinkles, but yeah. like I admit there can be too many sprinkles. You pepper them in, yeah. And sometimes yeah. like sprinkles don't belong on something. Yeah, I and sometimes that. they taste bad. And sometimes they're they're bad. They're and bad sometimes sprinkles. someone makes poison sprinkles. That's true. By the way, I have a cupcake for you. Really? Hmm. <laughs> well, I have hot sauce for you, but. Oh, really? Yeah. Wait, I'm so excited. We actually ran out of your hot sauce in the kitchen well, from the last time you were here. Well, really? Just now? <laughs> yeah, Must no. have been that beloved. No, like we ran out of it a while ago. Well, good thing I brought you a three-pack. But you there's actually a, a hot version of the this. The burger one is good. The burger one's That's great. That's my favorite. The burger one is my second favorite now, but it used to be my go-to. I like the taco sauce right now because it's oh, the most complex. Yeah. And I found the things to eat it on. Okay. That are yeah. like that does matter. Really heckin' good. But both of both the burger and the taco are so good on steak. You know what? You're gonna think I'm crazy, and I hope this isn't an insult, but I use your burger sauce on stuff, and then I add a little bit of sriracha on top of it. Hey. Give it a little bit of that kick, a little, a little bit of hey, zing. Hey, that's and it fine. Is fire. You can do whatever you want as long as you're still using my hot sauce. I'm a big hot sauce mixer. So we're making a hot version of all three. Oh, and there is a hot version of chicken sauce out. Okay, but then by the winter we'll have a hot burger and a hot taco. So for those people who do want more spice, yeah, but they like the flavor. So you're saying I'm gonna have to bring you back on in a few months so that I can yeah. get the yeah. new hot sauces. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I mean, I work down the street, so I could probably just drop some off. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I mean, I'll come to I'm you. I'm right I, here. I, I can come to you. <laughs> yeah, you can come when you come on um, and eat the menu sometime. Yeah. I'll give. I'll send you a, a party favor. Thank you. I appreciate that. I'm looking forward to that. Um. So the story that I was going to say, we met. You came on an episode of Mythical Kitchen, fancy fast food. Oh yeah, it was a fun one. That was not the first time that we met. When did we meet first? We met at Disneyland in line for Space Mountain in 2018. I remember it. No, I don't. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's really funny because I was there with a friend and she recognized you right away, like knew who you were. I didn't. I, I mean, I knew who you were, but I didn't like watch your stuff very often. And I also it was way before I worked here. Also at that time, I was still thinking that wearing contacts and a hat were going to make me disappear, and it didn't. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't work for me. But, like, we were literally in line, and she was like, oh, my God, that's Keith from the Try Guys. And I was like, oh, really? And then she was, like, very, like, oh, like, he's here, you know, with his wife or whatever. Like, I don't want to intrude. Like, they're having a good time. Whatever. And then we happened to just end up standing next to you in line at Space Mountain, and she was like, oh, my God, he's right there. And I was like, okay. Oh, are you going to go say hi? I think she said hi. I have a terrible memory, but I'm pretty sure she like said hi or maybe waved. I don't know. I'm sure you now did. Now I'm confused. I'm pretty I'm... approachable. Yeah. I, I've tried to make it pretty clear you can say hi to me. Yeah. I'm pretty sure she did. But And I was there. I probably just stood awkwardly to the side. So maybe it doesn't count as us meeting. But I did kind of meet you pretty back in nice. 2018. And yeah. how did I seem? You seemed like a very kind man. And that's only been reinforced in the times that I've met you now and spent time with you. Two more. Two more now. This I love number being three. on the fancy fast food. I don't know why I haven't been invited back for another video. Yeah. When are we making Broth Brothers? Oh, <laughs> broth, broth Brothers? Bros? We spent oh, the first 30 minutes of the show talking about Hot Pot, and now it keeps back on Broth <laughs> Brothers. <laughs> well, look, there's a, lot, there's a lot of people out there looking for more soup content. <laughs> I mean, people like soups. You said that <laughs> with such conviction. There's a we're, lot of people out there looking for more soup content. We're on the precipice of soup season here. <laughs> like, it is about to be soup time. In some parts of the country, it's already cold. Dude, not I'm here. a huge soup yeah, guy. I'm a huge soup guy. What's your favorite soup? Top soup. Top soup? I mean, I'm a big ramen guy. I Everyone. love ramen. Everyone is. Of course. If I Hat, had to fork, pick a go-to pork soup. Pork fat soup. 
Yeah. Delicious. Pork, wait, your favorite is No, pork? I call ramen pork fat oh, soup. Oh, pork fat soup. It is. That's why it's delicious. Yeah. My wife thought ramen was healthy. <laughs> <laughs> she was like, we, she, we were like getting ramen for like the third time in like two weeks. Yeah. And she's like, well, let's get ramen. I was like, are you sure you want ramen? I was like, well, you know, I like it because it's like, you know, it's good for you. And like, and I was like, oh, oh, oh Becky. Pause. You know that it's like really not good no, for you, right? She's like, what do you mean? It's got like vegetables and it's soup. I'm like, yeah, it's pork fat soup. Yeah. And it's served with bacon <laughs> and you put noodles in it and then like egg yolk and yeah. it's like so high like, and yeah. it's so much sodium so much sodium it's like really highly caloric and like definitely bad for you and the reason people ate it is because they didn't know when they'd eat next originally and they were making like <laughs> soup out of pork bones and she just was <laughs> so yeah like, it's like it, it's like a really good filling cheap soup Got a little piece of bok originated. choy on top. Yeah. And it must yeah. be healthy. You got <laughs> corn. You yeah. can put corn in it. And mushrooms. <laughs> um, my favorite soup that's like the, the not everybody's favorite, but I think it's incredible, is Tom Ka. Tom Ka. Love. Tom Ka is good. So What's interesting. That? It's the it's not Tom Yum, which is the more popular, yeah. I think, Thai soup, but I yeah. think this is kicks Tom Yum's ass. Yeah. Because it's like a coconut, lemongrass, chili oil. And then all of these things you can't eat. Soup. <laughs> it's like filled with little pieces of root and yeah. stuff. And they don't tell you the first time you order it, like, oh, there's stuff in there you don't eat, yeah. by the way. You're just sort of supposed to know. Yeah. <laughs> and you like take a big spoonful of what looks like maybe it's a mushroom and you put it in your mouth like, this is a piece of a tree. <laughs> this is dirt. a hunk of tree. I don't think I'm supposed to eat this. Yeah. It's impossible to chew it. <laughs> it's like sharp. Yeah. And then there's even the lemongrass, like the base of it, where like it's kind of like a green onion yeah. in its mm. look, but it's it, so can, much harder. Yeah, it's so tough. It's not edible. It no. looks delicious. Lemongrass so good. Looks like a green onion. The first time you bite into lemongrass, you're like, what am I eating? Yeah, I'm like, eating just, a plastic straw. <laughs> it's literally just like it <laughs> so is so thick <laughs> and fibrous yeah. and tough. And sometimes people you can't eat it, but people will like sliver it into like chive thickness. Like really, yeah. really, then you can kind of eat it, but I really don't think you should. Yeah, no. I don't think your body can break it down. No, it's definitely if <laughs> it's you're a tree. <laughs> yeah, maybe if you have like a really constipated, maybe you need something that maybe. tough to like you're really break trying it to down. Push, you can eat some lemongrass. <laughs> oh you know, man, it's a but, it's like a spear. <laughs> unpopular opinion: I'm not a huge fan of pho. I like pho, but I yeah. definitely do not think it's in the top soup. Okay. List. At least not the the top yeah. Asian soup list. Yeah, I, think I don't. Ramen mind it. is like obviously the king, and yeah. then I think it's like Tom. For me, Tom Ka. For yeah. others, Tom Yum. Tom Yum. Yeah. Um, I think that, and also you, all those other ones like ramen comes in like you can get chicken ramen, you can get yeah. other ramen. It's all really good. What are your thoughts on minestrone? <sighs> you know, I don't love it. That's okay. But you know what I do like? French onion. Um, uh, logman. And it's like a minestrone. Log. So there's like, uh, it's L A G M A N, and there's also L A G M A, and they're really similar. And they're they're somewhere like in the Russia, China, yeah. Eastern European area where they all kind of do it, but it's a little different. But one of yeah. them is a soup. Yeah. And it kind of tastes like really, really good minestrone. Yeah. But it normally has like hand pulled noodles. So you'll see here, sometimes oh. it's a soup, sometimes it's a dry noodle. Okay. But the flavor is like really similar to minestrone. But it is a little bit like a little bit Russian, a little bit Middle Eastern, a little bit Chinese. Yeah. It's like kind of in that corner where they all kind of run into each other and you've got a little bit of like, oh, there's cumin here, but then there's also this yeah. other stuff here. And it's really good. And it's um We might have made this for GMM one time now. I can't remember. I've only found one place in LA with it. And it's like this Eastern European restaurant that is like near Calabasas. Yeah. That sounds like <laughs> that's where I Calabasas. found Calabasas. And I and it, I had it was the weirdest thing. We were there on Mother's Day and we arrived. <laughs> and it was just me and my friend Alex. Yeah. And there's nobody there. And we're like, <laughs> I'm I we drove all the way there and like, hey, hi. Um we're here. We'd have table two. Like, do you have a reservation? He's like, no. He's like, ah, oh, we can't take you. He's like, well, there's nobody here. <laughs> and they're like, well, we only do reservations on Mother's Day. He's like, I get that. I understand that. Uh, but I drove like 40 minutes. There's no, there's literally, like, no one. actually, quite literally, nobody's there. Yeah. They've just opened. And they're like, well, we're expecting people. I was like, okay. <laughs> Well, could you sell it to me to go? And they're like, well, we don't do that one to go. I'm like, do you understand that I really just drove all the way here to <laughs> eat soup. this? And I'm totally fine. And then eventually, like, I'm like, 
is there anyone else I could like ask? Because <laughs> the hosts seem to be like, no, you can't. And I was yeah. like, well, okay. I really think that you can sell me this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I went, and I eventually like someone else came over and I was like, hey, I would really like to buy Logman. And then the fact that then that person, like the fact that I even said it, it was like, oh, well, you know what that is? I'm like, yeah, I yeah. drove all the way here because you're the only place that has it. And I really <laughs> just wanted to buy it. And I'd take it to go. Yeah. Or I would sit down at one of the many tables. Yeah. Oh, I sit outside. Yeah. Can I sit outside? I sit on that bench over there. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's not a part of the restaurant. Would that be okay? <laughs> and then they were like, we'll give it to you to go. I'm like, cool. And then they gave it to us to go. And they're like, and then sort of in that moment, they like changed their mind. And like, well, you can sit. <laughs> and then they brought it to us, seated down into go boxes. <laughs> no. And I was like, are we supposed to eat it? They brought us cutlery. Are we supposed to eat it here? Or do they want us to leave? And there's still nobody there. <laughs> there's still no one else there. And it's just really weird. And I'm like, do I tip the server? I've already paid. <laughs> and the server like didn't want me there. It was such a weird vibe. That is so bizarre. It was so weird. Oh, and to their credit, gosh. as we were leaving, a lot of people showed up. Yeah. But they weren't there when I was there. <laughs> And it really could have been fine. I also yeah. got some really good dumplings. They have good dumplings. Those, nice. Those like Europe weird. There's like a lot of weird dumpling mm -hmm. worlds yeah. out there that we don't know about yet. And I hope that we all start learning about them. Yeah. I mean, lots of balls are dumplings. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. It's, it's everything's a dumpling. I try to like lift up some small businesses that I like. And then sometimes I like keep them a secret. Yeah. Because I don't want it to be ruined. It's hard, man. When you just like live in a city mm -hmm. where there could just be people that see you. That see you. And that go to the places that you like. Yeah, you never know. know. It's really like fun, though, when you run spot. into somebody. Though. Oh, yeah. But there are. You're right. There's those little secret spots that I kind of just I don't mind my there. friends finding about them. I don't want it to become a place that I can't get a table at anymore. Yeah. Because I have made it too known. Yeah. Because I've done that to places before. Oh, that's where, tough. Like, like the pickup time used to be 15 minutes and then it became two hours. Oh, I was like, oh, no. Keith, you idiot. Keith, you <laughs> Keith, silly, you goofy goober. Idiot. What have you done? <laughs> I feel like Josh has probably done that to a handful of places. Yeah. Like Josh. It has, does. It's good for the place. Yeah, no, it's great. <laughs> but gosh darn. Yeah, I know. You're a, you're a big fried chicken guy, though. You've made that clear. You, you love it. You've made it clear. Uh, I think throughout your whole countless career. time, countless times. Yeah. Do you? How do you feel about your fried chicken trivia? I feel okay. Feel okay. I feel okay. Jamie's written me some questions. Okay, and awesome. They're kind of hard. Okay. Are they, you ready? I'm not Josh. Josh is like an encyclopedia brain. Yeah, he's weird. Like I, but I think I, I, I think I'll get at least one of these right. At least one. Okay. There's only three here. Okay. And they're difficult. Okay. Yeah. I'm still hoping for at least one. So that's my bad. I feel like I make questions too hard because I used to make things hey, really let's easy. Let's find out. Hey, let's not. No excuses. <laughs> okay. If I don't know it, that's on me. Yeah, it is. All right. I'm trying to be a fried chicken god over here. So let's let's find out. You're ready to learn. When yeah. was the first known fried chicken recipe published? Published. Published. Oh, that's tough. I. <laughs> <laughs> you looking for like the month? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no. The year. The year. year. Okay, how about the century? Uh, <laughs> I will take the century. I would imagine that published, it was probably late 1800s or, no, it would probably be early 1800s. It probably, I'm going to go for like 1827. You're uh, 80 years off. What was it? What was it? 1747. Late? 1747. Hannah Glass. A hero. A true hero. Was it the one that actually has the recipe too? Where it's like, it's like. Pass I, it, to like, Jamie. It, it was like really simple and it didn't have like. I think I've seen yeah, the recipe. It was recipe. like, yeah, it was like one of the first. It's like not the Where, first. It doesn't known, have like um, but... a lot of proportions. Yes. It has the ingredients. It's more of an ingredient recipe, but I don't think it gives the. Because I remember I've seen it. Oh, I've seen. I've just seen not the real one. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but I've seen it because because I have done like fried chicken videos. Yeah. I've like found. I've definitely probably even said the correct date in a video at some point. Yeah. Um. But I've seen it, and it's like really bare bones. And uh, I do know some interesting things about fried chicken in terms of like where how it kind of came together. So people were frying fish in Scotland initially, and then they eventually mm. like that was what was like the first. And Europeans mm -hmm. were frying fish. And then they started, like, it was kind of an American thing. Obviously, it's a product of, like, slavery and things yeah. like that. Um, but it really is interesting how it came to be. Yeah. I mean, if 
pre like 1900s, like meat was just like boiled in Europe. Like yeah, in the no, UK, it was, it like, was boiled and they fried fish, and that's yeah, it. Like there was they, just a lot of boiled meat and yeah. fried fish, and then people realize, oh, you can actually cook things. In Even other in ways. Asia, they weren't yeah. frying. Like they were really boiling chicken, and yeah. like uh, the whole Korean fried chicken thing mm-hmm. was. From KFC. Yeah. Going over there. And then they were like, we could do this. Yeah. And they were like, well, just stop boiling until you start frying it instead. Yeah. And then they were like, uh, one flavor is boring. We yeah. should make a billion flavors. And it's so good. And now I, there's some like crazy statistic of like there's more Korean fried chicken restaurants in Korea than there are McDonald's in the world. Something ridiculous. Oh Something my. preposterous. There was a show that I watched. It was a, it was a K-drama about zombies. One of the main characters, his parents owned a fried chicken place. My wife watches a lot of K dramas, and I watch a lot of the other, like, really just bizarre Korean yeah. or or Japanese like shows that they're kind of got K drama elements, but yeah. they're actually like action shows. I remember, like, even like Squid Games before that, like, became super popular. There's like a bunch that are really similar to Squid Games oh, that are yeah. equally good, if not actually better. Yeah. yeah, and you would just never find them. Yeah, there is one. I can't remember. Uh, uh, Alice in Borderlands. Yes, Alice in Borderlands. Yeah. It's about to get really a season two as soon. So good. It's like next month. Oh my god! And that, that one, one was is trippy. crazy. That one was trippy. It was that crazy. first two episodes was insane. That second episode, you're like, "Are you kidding me?" Yeah, no, <laughs> unreal. <laughs> They're gone. Oh god! <laughs> the end of the season was like, "What's going on? <laughs> is wow. there an escape of this? I don't know. Who knows? Who knows? What if we, we are living it? in a simulation?" You know, I saw a funny like meme that that question that because they were like, you know, with all of the times I use my smartphone every day, it's never in my dreams. I don't think I've ever, I don't remember phones being in my dream. That's crazy. I don't know, but I also don't, I'm not good at remembering my dreams. Yeah, of course not. I I have very bizarre dreams and I I forget them immediately. My most vivid dreams don't actually come when I'm sleeping overnight. It's when I take a nap like in the afternoon and it's hot. And so I'll be, get, if like I get really dreams sweaty, become real dreams. yeah, yeah, yeah. And I need to get freaky dreams uh-huh. and they're super vivid. And then I'll wake up and I'm just like and dripping, so pouring sweat. <laughs> I'm so thirsty. There'd be like a, a, literally a pool of sweat, like in my bed, just like the, you can see a, a dark spot mm-hmm. on my covers. And I'm just like, what's going on? What's real? Who am I? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Sleeping, napping too hard is a real problem that they need to figure out like a medicine for. Yeah. Like a way to wake up from a nap when you nap too hard. Yeah, I'm a I'm a serial hard napper. Like it's I, bad. I don't nap ever. Me neither. So if I do nap, I'm at high risk. Yeah, to nap too hard. I nap all the time and I nap too hard. Mm. I don't know what it is. It's like it depends on the time of day that Always I do power it. Power through instead. Sleep at night. Yeah, I try to do that, but then it's hard. But I'm such a good sleeper because I'm of a it. terrible. Sleeper. I sleep. I went to sleep at like nine thirty last night. I went to sleep at like. I woke up at six three in the morning last night. That's and I was also late. doing laundry. Oh. Uh, and I didn't I didn't properly calculate the amount of loads that I need to do. Yeah, laundry can really trap you. So then yeah, so then I've got I got three loads left and I even have laundry like in my home now. And oh, I still can get trapped. Jealous. I can you can still get trapped. I've definitely gotten so tired doing laundry before that like in like my apartment's like communal laundry, I've left a load of clothes in the dryer. Like the yeah, my last load that it. dried, and then someone puts it on top, and, and then you so have it's a walk of shame. <laughs> you just hope no one's there. Can we play GeoGuessr? Can we play GeoGuessr? <laughs> you thought I forgot, didn't you? Um. Oh, you know what I wanted to talk about? Yeah, what? I have a comedy music band. Yes. Okay. Which most people are like, what's that? Well, it's actually what Rhett and Link used to do, kind of. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I and we tour around and we do shows and um, we make funny songs. But uh, the coolest thing we're doing is right now we're working on. Putting up a show off Broadway in New York. No way. Now, this won't happen until March. Um, really? But we're like doing all the logistics stuff right now. So we put the show up in LA actually this summer. It's called yeah. The Wizard of Friendship. And it is a, it was made as our comedy special. We were like, we want to do a comedy special that's not just us singing, but yeah. like something more. So we wrote a theatrical story that follows us as we're doing a comedy special and we have a fight on stage during our first song which breaks the Wizard of Friendship's heart, who's, of course, in the audience. Yeah. When you have a, a friendship so pure and special, it actually cr- gives the Wizard of Friendship life. Yeah. And because we have that friendship, he was alive, and he was there to see the show, but then he saw us fight, and it broke his heart into three pieces that were scattered across the land of Nofrendia, where we were also banished to figure out how to fix our friendship I before the comedy special ends. 
because if we don't fix our friendship and get back and finish the comedy special, we'll never be the most famous comedy band. <laughs> <laughs> so, love, and while we're there, that. we turn into exaggerated versions of what makes us a bad friend. Yeah. Um, so it has like lots of costumes. I have a paper mache head of my head. Yeah. <laughs> that I wear. <laughs> Is it like big? It's huge. It's like... huge. It's like, it's probably a third of my whole, like, it's probably the size of half my body. <laughs> and then it goes on my head. Yeah. And I'm turning into a giant bird dressed as a man because I'm like I'm so overbooked and busy with like try guys and other stuff that I'm like it feels like I'm very flighty yeah and I it takes me a long time to get back and sometimes I might cancel something but it's really just because I'm overbooked yeah uh, but also we just added in like and you know he thinks so much of himself he's so famous see so he has a big head about it so uh, yeah. <laughs> I turned into a bird with a giant human head nice and then we have another guy who's like Alex is like so anxious and anal retentive about everything and always like and he truly is always texting is like is this still happening when are we doing this and he's like but yeah. he's actually him being hyper organized yeah but we make fun of him for it <laughs> and then uh, so he becomes a monster who has an insa insatiably itchy butt. He's so, <laughs> so anal retentive. It is physically manifested into a insatiably itchy butt. And then the other guy has a real struggle. His name is Huey, and he's a great musician. He actually won an Emmy yeah. um, for music. Uh, and he feels like if he's not the funny guy in the comedy band and he's not in a normal traditional band, does it mean he's not funny enough? to be in a funny band and not musically talented enough to be in a normal band? Yeah. Where does he lie? Yeah. Where does he belong? And like, it's actually the only real emotional struggle <laughs> I think in the show. Yeah. And it's like the least visually represented. But we travel around, we meet other people who are in No Friendia and we eventually solve our friendship, save the wizard and get back. Well, spoilers. Well, we don't always do it. What? You have to see, you have to see the show. But yeah, it'll be playing off-Broadway in New York. That's in March, awesome. that's amazing. So, and it's only it's only going to be like a ninety nine seat theater. It's going to be a super intimate, like super fun run. It's going to yeah. be like a nice. I feel like artistic fulfillment. I feel yeah. like I went to school for theater. Yeah, you know, so I've obviously not been doing that. <laughs> and uh, yeah. but it's definitely like a thing I've always wanted to do. Like yeah. and and do that Broadway thing of like doing the same show for weeks on end. Yeah. And like, how do you do that? How do you creatively? I don't know, still find it fun yeah. and find discovery in it. And I think it'll just teach us a lot about that. And also we're going to cast it with all like people in New York who are trying to be Broadway. So it's going to yeah. sound so good and yeah. it's going to have like dance that has real dance. And yeah. I love I'm that. really That's excited amazing. about it. And uh, it's logistically one of the hardest things to do because it, and it's all also, it's like a huge gamble. It's like so much, it's like making a movie. Yeah. Like it's so much front expense yeah but it's cool and it's really fun and i'm hoping people come see it that's awesome well, trevor, congratulations trevor we're going to new york in March. i want to yeah. that sounds amazing i love i am trying to actually build, we're trying to build in like a walk-on role so if any of our friends are ever there they can just come in and have like this incredibly easy like you could learn it in 10 minutes role just for fun just for fun um and we also you know we tour so we have some shows lined up in november okay. that are scattered about the midwest i think it's like I don't really know. Iowa, maybe Kansas City, maybe uh, somewhere in Ohio. They're sort of scattered about the Midwest. So look look on my socials and you'll see me retweeting it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Check out. Sure, there's yeah. a website. There, and and uh, that show is super fun. It's like a comedy concert, right? Yeah. So like, but we still make it very theatrical. I normally bring some sort of brass on the road, whether that's a trombone, a French horn, or a trumpet. Yeah. And we uh, have an accordion often with us. We just, It's like a really ridiculous, yeah. very musical, very goofy, a lot of crowd interaction. Yeah. I throw tortillas when we sing White People Taco Night. Nice. So you can have I that love, to look forward to. It's amazing. Love that yeah. Song. Yeah. <laughs> catch a tortilla. <laughs> catch a tortilla. And we sign the tortillas after if you catch one. No but we, way. we would like you to laminate it so it doesn't mold. That yes. makes sense. Yeah. But you can laminate a tortilla? I think you can laminate anything. <laughs> that's thin enough. Wait, can you? I I think that's I actually. Think, I think a tortilla is it's... one of the things you could laminate. How have we not done that on like GMM? How have we not just laminated stuff? Well, here you go. Maybe that's just a this stupid a idea. idea. Maybe I'm the only person that thinks that's funny or cool. I wanted to see if you could no. laminate a fruit roll up since it already feels like it's been laminated. Surely you can. Yeah. I'm right. trying to think of other flat things you can laminate. Oh, that are food based. Tortilla. Well, fruit if you roll can do up, a pepperoni. Other pepperoni. deli meats. Yeah, you know, any sliced meat, I would say. If you can do a tortilla, can you do a quesadilla? Yeah. Yeah, if it's not like a jacked quesadilla. Yeah, you can't have like a loaded quesadilla. No, just cheese. Yeah, but you, just yeah, cheese. you could do like shredded chicken quesadilla too. You yeah. can see what's the maximum thickness that can go through a laminator? <laughs> I don't know. I've never used a laminator. And since a laminator uses heat, 
is it gonna cook the food? <laughs> Like, can you put, Wait, could you put shredded <laughs> cheddar into a tortilla into and laminate tortillas. it and see if it, and then open the seal and see if it cooked it? We have to do it. It says. <laughs> Someone needs to do it's that. It's probably not a high enough temperature. It's probably <laughs> just like 120 degrees. Who's laminating stuff? I, you know, hotels. <laughs> <laughs> the breakfast menu sometimes is laminated. You know it is. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. <laughs> okay, hotels. You think a schools. Holiday Inn could take one of the the printer pancakes that they make and run it through one of their laminators? <laughs> I wonder if it would squish it down. Like if you got like a pancake, if it would just like if a laminator if it would, would like flatten it, flatten it. Yeah, it probably yeah. would because it's already so. Yeah, it's a cake. Oh, have um, you ever tried to look up how much those <laughs> things cost? <laughs> no. the, those those um not the laminator but the pancake printer from Holiday Inn. They're a fortune. Wait, what is a pancake printer? You don't printer? know what the pancake printer is? <laughs> no. It's like, it's the Holiday Inn. I don't think it's called a pancake printer. <laughs> I'm but it, it looks like a printer and it spits out pancakes. Pan- pancake bot? Pancake yeah. bot. But look at it. It's a printer. Oh, Jamie's pulling it Pull up. it up. You're looking, you got it all wrong. You got, <laughs> this, this, these images are all wrong. These are not what I'm looking for. Yeah. See? Oh my god, it's actually a printer. <laughs> it's a printer. <laughs> it's, it shoots them out it's the a side. printer. What? <laughs> Why? <laughs> it rolls them out. <laughs> and it's a printer. <laughs> this <laughs> Why? <laughs> well, they cost eight hundred dollars. Some of them are four thousand dollars. Yeah, some of them are like four thousand dollars. <laughs> For really mediocre pancakes. <laughs> like, they're not good. I mean, what's that? That's got to make sense, though. $4,000 one time you got pancakes for your hotel. For, yeah, but you still have to buy the batter. Well, you have to buy you the batter. You still have to buy the ink. But think about <laughs> the ink. Think about what you'd be paying a person to flip pancakes, though. I feel like less. Yeah. Less than 4000 plus batter? Well, because they're not only say. going to be doing pancake flipping. I feel yeah, like can, they would do They can do, do other stuff things. the rest of the day. <laughs> like, you're not just going <laughs> to... Can they? <laughs> I think I mean, it could. It depends on the demand. Like, how many pancakes do you need? Is you it already rush? have a, the desk person bringing out the muffins. Yeah, and but taking you think about away. you think about a Holiday Inn. That's going to be in operation for thirty years. You know what? You I, got the one time cost <laughs> plus a little bit of maintenance and upkeep on a four K. We should talk about how at these places they have like the individually wrapped muffins. Right? Those are only available from like seven a.m. to nine a.m. Why? <laughs> <laughs> Why can't those oh, can... individually wrapped muffins just be there all the time? <laughs> because it's more money. They take those and they put them in the those fridge and they pop cost them out. Anything? <laughs> yeah, but they're saving money by not leaving them out all day because people but, would take them. But you think of how much more they could charge per room with their all day breakfast. Yeah, all day muffins. I had a place though. You know, normally they leave the coffee out at least all day. Yeah, I had a place. I said recently they took the coffee away, and no. I, I came down at like ten a.m. And and I was just getting another cup of coffee, and it was gone. I was like, "Is the the coffee gone?" And the guy's like, "Oh yeah, we take it away at 10. I'm like, <laughs> "You do?" That sounds too early to I take was like, it away. You also. do? I've definitely been at this same chain of hotel at 4 p.m. and there's been coffee. <laughs> like I know what I'm getting, but yeah. coffee is not a breakfast beverage no, anymore. No, 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 no. no. Mm-hmm. It maybe was once in the past, but yeah. you put ice in it. That an afternoon beverage now. <laughs> That's I was like, absurd. I was really shocked. <laughs> I was really shocked. That is shocking. Checkouts at eleven. I'm I've got time here. I'm not asking for the muffins <laughs> back. I was. I definitely wanted the muffins back, but uh, the coffee was what mattered. And it's not even good coffee. Oh, <laughs> uh, all right. Don't lose. It was sight. Residence Inn. I gotta say it. <laughs> 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 I love Residence Inn. There's the number one hotel chain of Lou Burger tours. Um. Can we play Geo <laughs> Okay, let's do, let's do at least one round. Oh, one round, one round, one round, round one round. Okay, and then we have then to, we, we have to, have to wrap it yeah, up. Yeah, then we can wrap it up, but I want to play one round. Yeah, and th- you, let's do, okay, we'll Please, do one global for you. <laughs> this looks like here. Dude, it could be this Florida. Miami. Miami. I was going to say, like, Miami. It's Miami. Yeah. You think Miami? Uh, well, it def- so Miami has the, Miami Beach is actually separated by, like, water to the rest of Miami. Yeah. So the fact that I'm seeing that, like, sort of in-between canal. Yeah. And the trees are very Florida. Yeah. I mean, it could be another part of Florida, but it really seems, and those sort Do of, like, have street signs dumb, like this? lots of hotels. Wait, wait, go up to that sign there. Up uh, One more. A little bit closer. I think it says the same thing as this, that's on the light. It does say the same. What does it say? 5200 wow. block. 
I really think it's I'll Miami guess, Beach. I'll guess Miami. Yeah, we can guess Miami Beach. Okay. See that little see that has a like, strip of water down there? We're going to keep getting in there. Keep zooming, keep zooming, keep zooming. Zoom, 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 zoom. Yeah, it's on the, on the, on, see that? It looks a lot wider than what I saw. But let's just go for it. <laughs> All right, so like right here, we want to say? Uh, zoom in more. <laughs> <laughs> Scroll up. Yeah, right there. there. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. All right, Miami Beach. I'm guessing. Oh! oh! <laughs> <laughs> that was crazy! Oh my god! I we were good. I saw it. I was, Twelve points off from perfect. I that said, is unreal. Miami Beach. <laughs> You're a freak of nature. <laughs> if I had scrolled more on that map, I would have seen that little tube of water and be yeah. like, right there. <laughs> <laughs> Thank this you for coming on fun. the show. Yeah. You had a good time. I had a great time. I'm so glad. Yeah. Thank you for coming on. Yeah. Um, yeah. Definitely. What projects do you have coming up? Do I have coming yeah. up? Yeah. <laughs> you never get a chance probably to plug your own stuff on your show. You know. Um, yeah, Mythicon, sh- right around the corner, um, I am doing a live version of this show at Mythicon with Shane and Courtney from Smosh. So fun. Which will be very fun because Shane and I are bitter rivals. Oh. And Courtney, I guess, is just getting caught in the middle. So mm-hmm. good for them. But, you know, I mean, you got a lot going on. You got hot sauce. Mm-hmm. Hot you got sauce, Lou Burger, Try Guys, of Lou course. Burger, we have our own Try podcast, guys. Tripod. Yes, uh, It's every Thursday morning. Miles was here earlier. Miles came to steal some industry secrets from yeah. you guys. Lovely chap, that guy. Is there anything else you wanna you wanna talk about? Wanna plug or no, words just... words of wisdom to end oh, on? Oh, follow um, Lou Burger on TikTok because Ooh. one of the reasons, and this kind of has to do with our off Broadway show. We do these uh, sort of like half improvised duets of famous okay. musical numbers, and we've started doing it actually with Broadway musical casts. Oh, nice. So as probably by this time this comes out, we'll actually be in New York shooting some of these with different musicals. Sweet. So that's just fun TikTok content. So if you like musicals, you'll like Lou Burger because we have a lot of cross pollination yeah. with them. Lou Burger. Lou Burger. L E W B E R G E R. Lou Burger. Lou Burger. Yeah. And you've got the links in your social media. Yeah, probably. Go check out his social media. Yeah. Got Keith Habs. We will also put that in our own show notes. Oh, so nice. Yeah. It'll be down in the description. That's what the cool kids are calling yep. the description these true. days. Well, thanks for having me. Thank you for coming on. Everybody, that was Keith Habersberger. Everybody, please go check out. Uh, he's got his hot sauce. Where did I put it? Oh, I got it. I put it down here for safekeeping so that Jamie couldn't steal it. I was definitely going to do that. Yeah, I know you were. <laughs> uh, he's got his hot sauce. It's really good. And I'm not just saying that because I like Keith. I actually use his hot sauce on a regular basis in the kitchen because he brings some anytime he comes over. Um, so definitely go check that out. Check out Lou Burger. Uh, like he said on TikTok, um, they're posting some videos, but got a really cool show. It sounded really good. I want to see it, but I don't know if I can go to New York. <laughs> but um, regardless, Keith, great guy. Check out the Try Guys. Check out all this stuff. They're funny guys, and they're super nice. Um, Jamie, how do you think that went? I loved it. It was just, I felt like the perfect kind of match in terms of... Keith and I should get married. Yeah. I mean, you might have to ask Becky, which is his wife. Yeah, I'm familiar. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know that you needed to clarify that it was his wife. (laughs) I'm clarifying for the audience. Okay, sorry, my bad. Uh, No, but he was really great, and like, honestly... I just like when people kind of shoot the and then tell stories yeah. about the different experiences that they have. Because that's, I feel like you learn the most about someone is through the stories they tell. Yeah, I mean, he was great. Like, he just like kind of ma- he matched the crazy energy. We jumped from topic to topic without even, like, I asked him one trivia question about fried chicken. We got off that so fast. He loves fried chicken. And he, we just jumped ship. And I love true. that. I'm not committed to any point of conversation ever. Zero commitment. I want to go, I want to bounce around as much as possible. And he, he did that. And he's also just a cool guy. He's so nice. Yeah, super, super nice. And like, honestly, one, you're going to have to let me try the hot sauce. Because what I do like, so this is me, because I like hot, hot sauce. But I do like that he created hot sauce for people that can't necessarily take really hot sauce. Yeah. Jamie, it's kind of cold in here. Is it? Yeah. I can fix I'm kind of chilly. You can fix that? Mm-hmm. Oh my God, no way. Shut up. Shut up. <gasps> Shut up. Wait. Kind of sick. It's kind of sick. Yeah. Kind of it's Rhett and Link as smiley faces. But it'll keep you can I warm. Do it without taking my hat off? Yeah, I think. Oh. Freaky. This is nice. This. Hey, if you like this sweater that I just put on, you can get it literally right now at mythical.com. It's actually very soft. I, I generally, okay, not to talk crap here, but this is like the ideal sweater bagginess and length for me. 
Okay, because I've gotten some sweaters um, that are like a little bit tight, and like yeah. th- that's a look sometimes. But this one is very cozy, and it's like winter time, not in LA, <laughs> but like around the other parts of the country where it gets cold. Like this is kind of fire, and it's cute. I would wear this. I would. I would. Act- I just hit my hat on the microphone. I'm sorry. I'd wear this. Yeah. Google.com. Check it out. Um, Jamie, I've got a useless fact this week. Yes. Are you ready to hear it? Are I the am... people ready to hear it? I think so. Did you know that? Okay, are you familiar with the term jiffy? Yeah, back in a jiffy. Back in a jiffy. Like, oh yeah, just a jiffy. Yeah. Or jiffy lube. Or sometimes back in a jiff, you have to shorten the word even more. Yeah. Jiffy lube. I wonder if that's... Well, okay, let me get into the fact. Jiffy is actually a measurement of time. Oh, like actually? Yeah, it's like an actual measurement of time. Do you know how long it is? How long is it? Do you want to guess? I mean, a jiffy, usually people, it's like maybe like a minute. Because people are like, I'll be back in a jiff. And it's like, they just go get something from the other room and they come back. Yeah, well, guess what? They're lying to you. Because a jiffy is one one trillionth of a second. One one trillionth. That's right. Did you know that? Sometime during the later 18th or early 19th century, scientist Gilbert Newton Lewis defined a jiffy as the amount of time it takes light to travel one centimeter in a vacuum. So you've got a vacuum, right? Mm-hmm. The amount of time it takes light to travel one centimeter, he found out, apparently, that that's 33.4 picoseconds. I don't even know what that is, but it's one one trillionth of a second. So... Pretty useless measurement of time. And anytime anyone has told you that they're going to do something and be back in a jiffy or it'll just be a jiffy. I don't know if anyone says that, but they're lying to you. So you need to call out your friends and family members that use that word and tell them to stop lying, stop misrepresenting the amount of time that it's going to take them to do something and be honest. (laughs) Like, when did people start using that as a term if that's what it means? I, I guess know. people say I'll be back in a sec, and you know it's not just a sec, but one one trillionth of a second. One one like, trillionth. Of a... You can't even blink that fast. I just did. <laughs> I swear to God, I did. <laughs> you might not be able to, but I can. Okay. Look at me. I'm doing it. <laughs> one one thousand. I, I did it. One one trillionth. Yeah, but I just blinked like f- fifty times in oh. one second. All right. Whatever. Which, if you divide that mathematically speaking, <laughs> thank you everyone for listening to Trevor thank Talks you. Too Much, um, the show that comes out every Tuesday. So listen Tuesday, wherever you get your podcasts and shows. Uh, the video version comes out the following Monday uh, on Trevor Talks Too Much dot com backwards slash forward slash YouTube dot com slash Trevor Talks Too Much dot gov dot net dot org. Um, <laughs> dot, dot AU if you're in Australia. Uh, dot EU if you're in EU. Uh, and leave a review, comment, something or other. Let me know how I'm doing. I need the feedback. I don't know. A lot of times I just feel like I'm shouting into the void sometimes. But there are those of you out here that are catching those words. And let me know if they're good words that I'm throwing. Thank you. Follow us on social medias and other places. And have a lovely week. And I'll see you next time. <laughs>